Hollywood, Colgate Tooth Powder presents the Mel Blanc Show, written by Mac Benoff, with Mary Jane Croft, Joe Kearns, Hans Conried, Victor Miller and his orchestra, and starring the creator of the voice of Bugs Bunny. Mm. What's up, Doc? Yes, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show, with Mel playing his new character, Zuki. Hello, everybody. But, uh, but, uh, uh, hello, everybody. But, uh, but, uh, uh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> And starring himself in person, Mel Blank. Hi, folks. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. It cleans your teeth, makes breath so sweet. Use Colgate Food Tooth Powder. Want teeth that sparkle and dazzle, a breath that's fresh and sweet? Then try Colgate Tooth Powder, for the new all-purpose Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your teeth and sweetens your breath. Yes, this new all-purpose tooth powder produces an amazingly rich active foam that's marvelously effective. Every time you brush your teeth with this new all-purpose Colgate Tooth Powder, your whole mouth feels clean, sweet, fresh. Your teeth regain their natural sparkle. It's been proved in seven cases out of ten that Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And as for cleaning, you can depend on Colgate tooth powder revealing the natural brilliance of your teeth. Yes, Colgate tooth powder, the new all-purpose tooth powder, does everything you can expect or ask of a dentifrice. Try Colgate tooth powder today for teeth that sparkle and a breath that's sweet. Use Colgate tooth powder. Here it is, the month of June. For those who are single, it's the month for marriage. For those who are married and know better, it's the month for vacation. Anyway, in Mel Blanc's little town, everyone is looking through travel folders, and we hear Shirley Davis saying to her boyfriend, Gee, the places in this travel folder are beautiful, Roy. Shirley, I'll go right down to the travel agency and arrange a trip for us. And Mary Smendrick is saying to her boyfriend, Tom... Gee, the places in this travel folder are beautiful, Tom. Mary, I'll go right down to the travel agency and arrange a trip for us. And in Mel Blank's fix-it shop, Betty Colby says to her boyfriend, Mel Blank... Gee, Mel, the places in this travel folder are beautiful. Betty, I'll go right down to the travel agency and get you some more folders. <laughs> If we get married, we've got to go somewhere. Look at these places. Alluring Alaska. Haunting Hawaii. Mysterious Mexico. Betty, haven't you got anything like cheap cucamonga? <laughs> I can just see us now in Alaska. We could go tobogganing and dog sledding. Oh, it's so much fun to go dog sledding. You'd yell mush and I'd yell mush. Yeah, but while we're mushing, who's going to watch a sled? <laughs> Oh, nothing doing, Betty. I can't afford any long trips. Well, here. Here's a nice trip. It's only $200, and we can see the Hoover Dam. Betty, I know how to save the $200. How? Let's stay home and look at my Hoover vacuum cleaner. <laughs> oh, here's a wonderful place, Sun Valley. And the weather there is very unusual, you know. Sun and snow. Girl can put on a bathing suit and go skiing. Well, gosh, that's nothing. What's really unusual is to see your girl put on a bathing suit and go swimming. <laughs> What are you talking about? You can hardly swim yourself. Oh, is that so? You should see me swim and dive. In fact, I'm one of the best divers in the country. I do a half gainer, a jackknife, and a swan dive all rolled into one. Oh, what's that called? Belly flop. <laughs> Look, Betty, let me handle one vacation problem at a time. First, I've got to get that summer cottage for your father. Well, speaking of... Hello, Betty. Hello, Father. Hello, Mel. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Colby. Say, Mr. Colby, I think I'll be able to line up a summer cottage for you. Well, I've been thinking, Mel, what I really want is to get away from it all. I want to live in the open, cook my meals in an open field with no roof over my head. I want to live like a hermit. Mr. Colby, you don't want to live like a hermit. You want to live like a veteran. <laughs> Besides, you should be grateful for anything I can get you. If you think it's easy to rent something, just look at the ads in this paper. Uh, let me see. Hotel Pineview, concrete swimming pool for the private use of the guests. Rates $10 a day. For guests wishing to sleep in the hotel, $20 a day. Well, you see what I mean? And, and that's a good one. Listen to this. Dream house. The living room is a dream, the dining room is a dream, and the bedroom is a dream. Uh, what's the price? A nightmare. <laughs> well, Mel, maybe I should be grateful to you for getting me this cottage. That is, if you can, get it. Oh, leave it to me, Mr. Colby. Now, let's get in my car and go down and talk to the old sea captain who owns a cottage. <laughs> Gosh, 
gosh, Mr. Colby, listen to that motor purr. Sounds like a new 47. Yeah, a new 47 concrete mixer. <laughs> what kind of a car is this anyway? Why, it's two feet higher in the front than in the back. Well, it's a racer, Mr. Colby. It likes to start from a crouching position. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you get yourself a new car instead of this old jalopy? Jalopy? Why, this car happens to be a town and country. Town and country? Yeah, this is the only town in the country that'll give it a license. Yes, and it's typical of what you drive. In fact, I'm a little worried about this trip. I always feel nervous with an idiot behind the wheel. Well, don't worry, Mr. Colby. You won't have to do any driving at all. What? I mean, uh... Hey, look at that car coming towards us. It's fantastic. It has a California license plate. Well, what's so fantastic about that? He's driving on the right side of the road. <laughs> He's driving on the right side of the yes, road. Who said that? Oh, male boy. Now, now, don't... Colby, I'll get it started right away. Colby. What is it this time? I think I blew a gasket. Uh, we, we, well, uh, we, uh, what happened, Mel? Well, the car's in the garage and they're fixing it now. I phoned the sea captain and Mr. Colby and I are going to meet him at five o'clock. Now, be sure to be back here in time to mind the fix-it shop, Zuki. Oh, oh okay, Mel. Say, here comes that uh, b -b 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 bragging Bo Brummel, Hartley, b -b 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 Benson. I'm, 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 I'm getting out of here. Hello, Hartley. Uh, was that the screeching of your brakes I heard just outside? No, my old boy. It was merely the squeal of hundreds of women looking at great being adorable me. Through life, I've been disappointed. I can't kiss myself because I'm not double jointed. <laughs> oh, Hartley, you're not such a big shot with the women. Oh, no, Mel. In a recent survey, it was shown that men of distinction prefer to hold a highball glass in their hands, but women of distinction prefer to hold me. <laughs> Look, Hartley, you don't bother me at all today. I'm renting a summer cottage for Mr. Colby, and if I can get in good with him, everything will be milk and honey. Men, old boy, your milk has just curdled. I've just talked to the sea captain myself, and he has promised to rent the cottage to me. What? Yes. In fact, I'm signing the lease tonight. Hartley, were you out at the seashore today? Yes, Mel, and as usual, I was the center of attraction. <laughs> Some of the girls wore one-piece satin bathing suits. Other girls wore polka dot midriffs, but all eyes were upon me. Well, what were you wearing? My rhinestone evening trunks. <laughs> I covered myself with suntan lotion, but got an awful sunburn anyway. Well, that's odd. No, it isn't, Mel. My body is so beautiful, the sun fought its way through. <laughs> there was a beautiful lady lifeguard, and she rescued me 18 times. 18 times she grabbed me and pulled me to her. Well, Hartley, can't you swim? I wasn't even in the water. <laughs> but I finally did go in. First, I dipped in my toe. A crab grabbed it. Did he bite you? No, just kissed. <laughs> Gosh, Hartley, you must think you've got the most beautiful body in the world. Mel, you know how when some people pass away, they give their bodies to Harvard for medical research? Yeah? I'm giving mine to Vassar. <laughs> oh, Harley, you're not so hot with the women. Oh, no. Mel, once I was traveling through the country, it was a very warm day, so I jumped into a little stream for a swim. Do you know what that place is called today? What? Hot Springs, Arkansas. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Mel, now that the magazines are coming out with their beach editions, they may put my picture in look or run it in life. 
Well, if they put your picture in, look, it'll have to run for its life. <laughs> oh, Mel, you make me... <laughs> you make me see red, so I must leave before Congress investigates me. <laughs> and as for the cottage, you and Mr. Colby can come down and see me sometime. <laughs> Bring Santa Claus. <laughs> Meanwhile, remember this. I'm as lovely as can be. I'm so sweet. Perfume smells me. So long, Mel. Nice seeing me. <laughs> Holy cat. Benson getting the summer cottage away from me right under my nose. When Mr. Colby finds out he has no place to spend the summer, he'll kill me. Well, if he does kill me, I'll have one thing over him. At least I'll know where I'll spend my summer. Here's Colgate tooth powder. Keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. It cleans your teeth, makes breath so sweet. Use Colgate that sparkle, a breath that's sweet. Isn't that what everyone wants? Try Colgate Tooth Powder, the all-purpose tooth powder. Instantly, it makes rich, active foam that dances around your mouth. Makes your breath sweeter. Yes, indeed. In seven cases out of ten, it's been proved that Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And oh, what a wonderful cleansing result you get from Colgate Tooth Powder. It leaves your teeth with that pearly, smooth feeling. Reveals their natural brilliance. So for teeth that sparkle and a breath that's sweet, try Colgate Tooth Powder, the all-purpose tooth powder. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Now let's listen to Victor Miller and his orchestra as they play Across the Alley from the Alamo. was about to make a very good impression on Mr. Colby by renting a summer cottage for him from an old sea captain, but Hartley Benson beat him to it and is signing a lease for the rental of the same cottage tonight. Now we find Mel in his fix-it shop, worrying as usual. Hello, Mel Blank's fix-it shop. You bend it. We mend it. Yes? Oh, the garage. You fixed my car? Well, uh, what was wrong with it? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 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 Out of gas, huh? Well, I'll be over to pick it up. Goodbye. A lot of good it does me to have the car now. What can I do to beat Hartley Benson out with the old sea captain? 
Oh, here comes my lodge president, Mr. Cushing. He always has some ideas. Maybe he can help me now. Uh, greetings, mighty potentate. Hello, Bell. Mighty potentate. 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 How's your little geranium? Mel, if you mean my wife, she's gone to pot. <laughs> Last night, she got up in the middle of the night and said, John, I can't breathe. It's too hot. If it gets any hotter, I'll die. Well, what'd you do? Threw another log on the fire. <laughs> well, when I first married that woman, she had a figure like an hourglass. Now? Her sand has shifted. <laughs> What a face! Why, the other day we went to the beach. I covered her almost completely with sand. The only thing uncovered was her face. What happened? The cops arrested her for indecent exposure. <laughs> oh, her face isn't that bad. Oh, no? When she went into the water, the tide went out. <laughs> so what? The tide always goes out. This one never came back. <laughs> well, finally she got out into the water and the fish saw her. Mel, that's the first time in history anybody ever heard a barracuda scream. <laughs> well, she went out too far. There was a fishing boat there, and they caught her in a salmon net. Oh, that must have been terrible. No. At the cannery, they rejected her. <laughs> oh, come now. You're just making things up. What a woman. Last week, we were on a hunting trip. I'll never forget it. I'd loaded the rifle. I was aiming it when my wife said, Oh, John, I want to use the rifle. Let me have it. Come on, John, let me have it. Good, what a temptation. <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you all this. It's just that I've got no one to talk to. I wish I could help you, mighty potentate, but I can't. As a matter of fact, I'm deep in my own troubles. I was supposed to rent a cottage from an old sea captain for Mr. Colby, but Hartley Benson is signing a lease for it tonight. Mel, you just mentioned an old sea captain. You remember his name? Yeah, it's Captain Zerb. Captain Zerb? Why, he's an old friend of mine. Mel, I got a great idea for you. What is it? Now, Captain Zerb is a pushover for anything having to do with the sea. You go there, pretend that you're an old seafarer and salt yourself, and I'll bet he rents that cottage to you. That's a great idea, mighty potentate. What made you think of a thing like that so fast? What do you know about the sea? Mel, remember my wife. For 20 years, I've been married to an old tugboat. <laughs> well, Mel, I hope my idea helps you out. I gotta be going now. Uh, where are you going, Mighty Potent? Well, Mel, I can do one or two things. I can go to the movies and see the web, or I can go home and look at the spider I married to. <laughs> oh, Mel, I got the blue, I got the blue, blue, I got I can always depend on the mighty potentate to help me. Gosh, it's getting late. I'd better rush down to Mr. Colby and tell him the idea. Oh, Mel, I knew you couldn't do a thing right. You had to foul it up some way. <laughs> Imagine Hartley Benson getting the cottage instead of me. But, Mr. Colby, if I tell Captain Zerb I'm an old sea captain, well, he'll surely rent it to me and you can move in. You an old sea captain? Oh, what do you know about the sea? Plenty. Listen to this. Alas, you landlubbers, for the act, hang the barnacles in the barn. <laughs> Ice my woodwork. Ice my woodwork. Ice my woodwork. What, what's that? That's a high-class way of saying shiver my timber. Oh. <laughs> come on, Mr. Colby, we got no time to lose. Now, remember, you go in first, then I'll come in later. <laughs> I'm sorry, matey, but my course is set. I told Benson that cottage was his'n. Blow me down, heaven will change my mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, Captain Zerb. If I'd rented the cottage, I was going to let an old sea captain live in it. You see, he has no place to stay. No port to drop anchor in? Oh. Well, of course, that may change my mind. Where be this old sea dong? Why, I told him to meet me here. Where? There's a salty-looking lubber coming up the steps now. He's ringing my doorbell. <laughs> That must be the Admiral now. I'll open the door. Well, come in, Admiral Blank. Meet Captain Zerb. Well, my compliments, Admiral Blank. Mr. Colby here tells me that you'll be an old sea dog. Is that right? Sure is. 
Just listen to this. <laughs> well, now, I... <laughs> Go out of the gang flag, heist up the penance, and bite him the barge. And while you're at it, reef in the mainsails. Go to the focus hole and get me a popsicle. Colby, you're telling me you've got no place to stay. That's right. I just got back from a trip across the Atlantic. Made it in ten hours. No, no, wait a minute. How could you possibly sail across the Atlantic Ocean in ten hours? Uh, the lights were with me all the way. <laughs> and I got kind of cold, too. I suppose you wore your long underwear aboard ship. Huh? You bet, and I kept the hatches fastened, too. Gosh, <laughs> gosh, my baggage. What a time we had, singing all the way. Yo-ho-ho and a bottle of milk. Milk? You mean rum? No, milk. This was a cattle boat. <laughs> uh, reminds me of the time I first went to sea. The captain gave, give me, giving me orders all the time. Uh, was you his first mate? No, his second mate. His first wife died. <laughs> what a skipper. Uh, 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 captain Zerb. Now, about renting the cottage. Mr. Colby, sir, it appears to me like everything shipshape. I have no blank here. Sold you for me. When this Benson landlubber comes along, I'm going to get everything squared away. You got the cottage. Ah, Captain, as we men of the sea always say, you're a salt after my own shaker. <laughs> ah, Captain Zerb, I've come to sign the lease. Just think how fortunate your cottage will be to be lived in by a great big adorable me. <laughs> Benson, great big adorable you, going to have to find another anchorage. I just told Admiral Blank he can have the cottage. Admiral Blank? I think I'll be going now. So long, Mr. Bunny. <laughs> Just a minute, Captain. This man is, is an imposter. He, you mean he's never been to sea? The only time Blank has ever been to sea is when he took the ferry boat to Hoboken. Over, <laughs> shiver the timbers, blow me down, man, the lifeboats, and heavens to Betsy Alfred Hortons. <laughs> Way, I'm going to scuttle every bone in your body. Oh, don't worry about Father Mail. He'll get over it. Just think, here we are, the two of us alone in your car. Yeah. Betty, you're so wonderful to me, always helping. The minute we got into the car, I had a flat tire, and what did you do? I fixed it. Yeah. Well... How do you like the way the old buggy runs now, Betty? Oh, it's very smooth now. It's just as if the wheels aren't even touching the ground. Yeah. Holy cat! What's the matter? The wheels are touching the ground. I forgot to take the jack off from under the car. This is Mel Blank saying thanks for listening. Good night, Andy. And the V, and the V, and that's all, folks. This is Bud Easton reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday night at this time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. Say hello to Halo Shampoo for naturally bright and beautiful hair. Remember, even finest soaps and soap shampoos hide the natural luster of your hair with dulling soap film. But Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather, quickly banishes loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo Shampoo at any cosmetic counter. Remember, Mel Blanc at the same time every Tuesday. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.